Hello, wonderful people. Today's voiceover is made by another kind person of the creative community. Dan, that's me. <laughs> so I am a paint maker and watercolour artist based in the UK. And Lana is very kindly leaving all the links to my pages down in the description bar. And I am doing her voiceover today to help her out because Lana is unwell at the moment. So I'd like to wish Lana a happy, speedy recovery. And hopefully her voice comes back soon. And I will try and do my best and hopefully you're all going to enjoy this video. So shortly before the lockdown was in act, I purchased the new pastel watercolours from the White Knights. My collection has grew over the years and I'm always happy with the quality of the paints. The more I liked the colours that they had, the more suspicious I was about the new ones. All of them are mixed with PW6, a white pigment. The wrapper around the pans has all the information and underneath is another full paper. Unwrapping all of the pans I realised that the Aztec Gold, which is one of the three metallic colours I've purchased, is considerably more empty than the other pans. The paint is shinier than usual. Somehow seeing all of those colours makes me happy and I was eager to try them out. Before I did that, I've added them to the White Knight's empty palette for 24 pans. Each of the four rows fits seven pans, but leaves some space for another pan. Ooh, more colours. Uh, the insert which holds the pans in the palette cannot be removed and are permanently attached. In the lid is some mixing space, but compared to other metal palettes, this one lacks a flap with additional mixing space. As I lack the space on my desk for huge palettes, I tend to remove this flap anyway, and the palette has rounded edges with no sharp corners. As soon as all the preparations were done, I swatched the colours. So we have Silver Light, Inca Gold, Aztec Gold, that one sounds interesting, Dunes, I'm really struggling to picture what this colour might be, <laughs> Peach, Coral, Rose Quartz, Pink Peony, Lilac, Lavender, Royal Blue, and Mint. All in all, I created three test paintings to thoroughly test the paints. They are definitely opaque, as you can see in the swatches. They flow nicely just as expected from the White Knights. The painting I'll show you today is the Albino Peacock. To ground the paints on white paper and add value to the painting, I added White Knights Sepia. For this, as well as the other paintings, I mixed the colours directly on the paper. The opaqueness makes it possible to paint on black watercolour paper as well and create chalk-like effects. Though the colours do not appear as bright and only as tinted white. The metallic colours were nice, but not the best that you can get out there. They are less shiny and less covering than the fine tech ones, but have a clear binder that doesn't show on its own. The silver is more of a pearl colour though, and just a shimmery white. If it wasn't for my curiosity, I probably would have never purchased these. Done that, I had a lot of unexpected fun painting with them. That's always good. It's good to have fun. The colours do not fit my style or permanent palette though, and are more of a fun toy. They might fit better to a more illustrative style, in general, I would argue that it's always possible to mix watercolours with white gouache to create a similar effect. So I wonder, what made the company create this range of colours in the first place, and what customers they had in mind? On their site or Instagram page, these colours are not promoted yet, and were not available for a long time even in the Russian shops. Even if I had fun using them, I would not suggest these colours 
as the ones to start with or add to a classical palette. But as always, that is a matter of personal preference and style. Soon these swatches will to be added to the sunandcolors.com and tested for light fastness over the next few months. It's a really great website, you really should check it out, I really like it. <laughs> it's really good for resources. Now it is time for Dan's voice to rest too and include some music. Who doesn't love tunes? I want to give a big thanks to Dan, who is so kind to lend his voice today. Well, I've had a really good time doing it and it's been really fun. Make sure to visit his channel or Instagram, which are both linked down below. Dan is not only a talented and passionate botanical artist, he also makes his own watercolours himself. They are great quality. One of the best ultramarine watercolours you can find, period, is made by him. Oh, that's so nice for Lana to say. <laughs> Lana has now told me to ramble about myself a bit so I'm a socially awkward British artist based in the UK I paint mostly botanicals so flower subjects I do sometimes paint a few other things like pets and the old portrait and illustration here and there and I'm often quite busy making my own handmade watercolours which Lana has very kindly bought quite a few of and it's always great that I can help her out with a voiceover. And it's been really fun doing this. And I'm really appreciative that Lana's allowed me to do it. Now in this difficult time, many shops close down and we are all asked to stay at home. The planet takes a little break. So if you can, try and support fellow artists, paint makers and other creatives, along with small local businesses. Take care of yourself, stay healthy, and discover some new hobbies. I definitely want to echo what Lana has said, and I hope everybody is staying safe out there and putting themselves and their health first. Have a creative day. Bye.